All right, in this video, I just want to point out um, a few little tidbits, just kind of useful things to remember about linearly independent uh, vector sets. So nothing heavy here. Again, just a little synopsis of things you may think about. So, um, so just to refresh yourself, if you uh, if hopefully you've uh, you know if you've worked with linear independence uh, a little bit. So if a vector has only, uh, or excuse me, if a set has only one vector, that clearly has to be uh, linearly independent as long as that vector is not the zero vector. I mean, if you have some random vector, say, 1, 2, 3, the only way that that's going to equal the 0 vector, obviously, um, if you multiply it by some scalar, is if the scalar um, equals 0. Well, and if, if the only solution or when the scalars equal 0, hey, that means it's linearly independent. So um, obviously this is not true with the 0 vector. It's not going to be true with the zero vector, obviously, because then you can multiply by any uh, non-zero constant um, and get uh, the zero vector. So in that case, uh, clearly, if the zero vector is there, um, it would have to be linearly dependent. So nothing crazy. Um, if you have two vectors, they're always linearly independent as long as one is not a multiple of the other. So one, two, three, four, five, six hey, those are going to be linearly independent, but 1, 2, 3, uh, 2, 4, 6, those would not be uh, linearly independent. Those would be dependent. Okay, so um, uh, the third one's very useful, I think. Um, so if you have a set containing n by 1 vectors, it's always linearly dependent if the number of vectors is greater than n. So, for example, suppose we've got, um, you know, two by one vectors. Um, whoops, I accidentally made the multiples of each other, didn't I? So, one, two, um, three, five. So, right now, these are not multiples of each other. So, this set would be linearly independent. But if I throw in um, any other vector, um, again, this is these are two by one vectors. Um, if I throw in any third vector, say, seven, uh, you know, 809, uh, these vectors are no longer linearly independent. They are definitely linearly dependent. Okay, so same idea if you had, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then we throw in any, so these are 3 by 1 vectors. If we throw in any extra vector, uh, 10, pi, 52, these vectors are now going to be linearly dependent, okay? So we've got four vectors, hey, that's more than the three by one size, so these are now going to be linearly dependent. Um, let's look at some of our other stuff here. Um, let's see. If you have a set containing the zero vector, that's always linearly dependent. And that just kind of goes back to the very first thing that we said. Um, you could multiply all the other vectors by zero, but then multiply the zero vector by any non-zero number, and you would get the zero vector, which, hey, would imply that it's, that it's uh, they're linearly dependent. Um, if you have a bunch of, uh, so number five says if you have a bunch of linearly independent vectors, then you can just start throwing uh, vectors out of that set, and you'll still have a collection of vectors that's linearly independent. So getting rid of vectors is not going to change that. Um, and again, if you have, say, uh, just distinct unit vectors, those are always going to be linearly independent vectors. So, um, for example, the set of vectors, you know, 1, 0, 0, the unit vectors, 0, 1, 0, and then 0, 0, 1. The, these are our good old unit vectors um, in R3, and those are definitely going to be linearly independent. So just a few useful tidbits, nothing heavy, nothing crazy. Um, but again, it, when you're working with linear uh, independence, I think it's good to keep these things in mind, uh, just some little shortcuts, uh, things to uh, keep you from uh, doing some maybe some unnecessary work.